The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder James Boy came to give him life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in. This on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rude. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation got the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it that counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Yes, it is time to unleash the power of the pyramid. Welcome to... The March 8th edition of One Nation Radio. I'm here with James. James, what's going on, man? Not too much. Just um, just ready for all of SmackDown to just be done with so we can get to WrestleMania. That's really all I want. <laughs> just, like, just, let, just let all this shit wrap up so we can just get to it. Just die. Just, just jump off a bridge, a cliff, uh, <laughs> something with a lot of space below because SmackDown is, oh my gosh. Now- Dude, it's such a chore. Like, I was cool during the Ziggler match, and then when they started, like, the five-way, I was just, like, mentally checked out at that point. So how about check this out? AJ and Ziggler were in the middle of their customary good match. Like, they always have good matches together. And next thing I know, I look up, and I say to my, and I look, I'm like, wait a second. There's a there's a five way going like, on. Like, I fell asleep, bro. Like, like what the fuck is Baron I Corbin doing in the ring, bro? I fell asleep. I fell asleep sitting in the chair, um, and at the middle of a match that I thought was good going on, and I fell asleep and woke up and realized, oh shit, there's a there's a five way. What the hell happened? I read later that like, you know, uh, the the Canadians ran in. Um, to break it up because of course, of course, they had to just you know couldn't let AJ just get a W, yeah. especially after the lose on uh the week before to uh to Cena. So then uh, they made it a five way, and then next thing you know, they're having a good five way match. But at that point, I'm like, dude, like who gives a shit? Like this show is just the worst right yeah, now. It's really bad. But before we get to that, we're gonna talk about SmackDown a little bit later in the show uh, for the Fast Lane preview. Yes, they do have the nerve to put on a pay per view on that brand. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the news this week. Let's start with the rumors of Alberto El Patron returning to WWE, more known as Alberto Del Rio. Um, definitely a favorite of uh, of James and I's like over the years, uh, regardless of you know his unpopularity in the internet wrestling community, which I've written a column uh, that explored the reasons why um, in the past. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So, so what do you, what did you make of this news? And does this make sense? And, you know, last time he was in WWE, it didn't really go so well. And we had a spirited discussion with our brother Rance about it. What up, Rance? Yeah, third time's a charm, I guess. Um, hope for the best. Like, he's very talented. Um, <clears throat> like, his first, or um, in 2013 when he went on his babyface run, like, it's pretty pretty inspired stuff. Even though, like, he was still working with Big Show at the time. You know, Big Show tends to, like, care only when he wants to care. When he does, he's still good. But when he doesn't, he's, he's shit. But, um... That went pretty well, and then, you know, he ran into Dolph Ziggler, and um, it was a really weird thing to happen to him over the, over that summer where they turned him back hill, and um, they gave him Jack Swagger's opponent with somebody they had, had, you know, made into, that, a, yeah. into a joke for a while. And pretty much at that point, the only thing he had going for him was the We the People chant and salute. Um, 
And I mean, they 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 literally tried to manufacture a, a quote unquote perfect opponent for Babyface Del Rio. It just did not work. Um, and then you know, tenure ended, and then you start over again in the second tenure, and it was even worse than the first one. I'm <laughs> uh, not to say that the first one was bad, but like the second one was like legitimately just a waste of a waste of money and time, everybody's time. Yes. Uh, he came back, he was cheered, and immediately made him a heel. Um, he's in there with with Kalisto. You're trying to make he's just trying to you know make Kalisto. It's not really working um, because just because you may have a small guy that can do flippy shit and you put a mask on does not mean you can have another Ray Mysterio Jr. Um, so uh, you know the League of Nations was a shits. Um, <laughs> like you know, and then. Uh, the whole pace thing and the PED uh, uh, failure, it was a really bad ending. And now apparently the meeting is they might do it again. And I, I mean, I hope it works out because like I said, um, I, under, I, I see, I see what they see in him, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what they expect to get out of it this time. I, I think the crowd has Checked more or less out. rejected them. And I think like, Creatively, they had nothing for him the last time around. I don't see why they would have something for him this time. I don't know. And he's um he's forty years old or coming up close to it. Um, and you know you, you kind of wonder about the shelf life that he has, like as a main eventer um, mm-hmm. at that level. But he is such a rare commodity. I mean, he's a six four, good looking guy from Mexico that wrestles WWE main event style. Um, I believe Edge had that quote, like, there was only one of those, like, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, pretty much, you know, and they have, they have Andrade San Almas, I've seen a lot of people, like, juxtapositioning them against each other, it's like, why do you need Del Rio when you have Almas, I'm like, because why wouldn't you uh, want b- both of them, like, <laughs> like, yeah. personally, like, it's not, it's not like, oh, there's only room for one, like, like what kind of token, what, what kind of, like, token exceptional, uh, ethnicity shit is that yeah um and just going back into more of how his last run was a disaster as you mentioned the man was cheered yeah. cheered oh, like oh, a... oh real quick like, we don't need we don't need we don't need Chicago Bozeman or go be Jordan like we got we had Denzel for 20 years why we why do we need another one what's yeah, the point man. Will Smith why we already got Denzel yeah. Jamie, Jamie Fox why yep Terrence Howard why there's only room for one. It's Highlander out here. There's only, there can only be one out here. Yes. Oh, uh, but yes, bro. As you mentioned, uh, when he first came back, the man was cheered like a god in L.A. The day he showed up, it was a surprise. Everyone wanted it. He was in the best shape we've ever seen him in. It was like, I don't know if it was assisted. I don't know, like, whatever. This dude showed up and he had torn it up the entire summer in Lucha Underground, Ring of Honor, anywhere he put the man. He was on fire. Um, He shows up, beats John Cena clean that first night. But you stick him with this Mex America gimmick bullshit with with Zeb Coulter while everyone wants to cheer him. Then you start having him do all these jobs and losing to Roman Reigns and then he falls into the League of Nations. As you mentioned with the Kalisto thing, from there it just degenerates further and further until he gets a wellness violation. Um, I think the page thing really soured him in the eyes of the internet. Um, and for what reason, I don't know. There, because there's still a lot that they don't know about that situation that we'll never know. Um, we got the big stories about it, but you know, they ultimately uh, ended up separated from each other, which you know, I guess everyone got what they wanted. Um, but I think this guy, Del Rio, uh, he's been in impact and he's had, you know, some issues and was suspended and he always kind of comes out because someone is always willing to try with him. And I think there's a reason for that. A, because the dude's talented and B, he's a commodity. (laughs) Like you want the guy to go away, but I don't know why, essentially, like why people hate him so much. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't, I don't really. I mean, I have some ideas. Do I have any ideas that I feel like I would want to um, share on a public on a podcast to get spread out on, on the internet? No. <laughs> um, but 
he like you said, he's a really talented dude, and um, I hope he makes it work this time, and I hope they make it work this time. And more, most importantly, they make it work because they ain't did nothing but fail this there's man. Only, <laughs> there's only, there's only, like, if they're really, if they. Get at a weird point to where eventually wrestling the WWE, given how many guys from NXT wrestle the way they wrestle, and given Vince's age, and uh, given who the best guys mm-hmm. on the roster are, like eventually it's going to become a point where like wrestling the WWE style makes you unique as opposed to it's a standard, it's a status quo. Um, and he's so and he's really good at it. So like. Given that, like we're about to be in a land of the five ten white guy, like left and right for the rest of, for the in the time it seems like with all the all the NXT guys coming up, like you're gonna need more guys like Del Rio, believe it or not. So like to add to add the diversity into like the ring work, um, like it's 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 um, I mean I don't know if maybe I'm you know. Over over estimating where 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 it's going, um, but I, it wouldn't hurt to have a Del Rio. Yeah. Um, then, um, can he not fail a drug test? I hope so. Yeah, that remains to be seen. But um, you know, Vince he was a, always a Vince McMahon guy. You know, he had the whole deal where he was apologizing to Triple H on the internet a little bit earlier, uh, the end of last year. So. It's a it's a weird situation that we don't know all the details to, but I will definitely be following the story close and giving it to you on YouTube and Anchor and also here on One Nation Radio. Um, but moving on, the there was a champ. There have been two championships announced, or one of them announced, and the other one's kind of unofficially been announced um, in NXT. They are coming out with a mid card belt titled the NXT North American Championship. Now, James, this is. I, I saw some posts in the Wrestling Square Circle, which is a group. Um, if you guys haven't joined, make sure you do. Um, it was right down the middle. A lot of people thought it was a good idea. A lot of people thought it was a bad idea. What, what did you think about um, the announcement of this edition? And then while you do that, I will pull up the participants in the match because they announced a ladder match for NXT TakeOver. Yeah, I... I mean, it's cool that you want to have another belt and I guess um, another division and whatnot, but on WWE, I, I really feel like we have way too many belts. Um, and in NXT, you kind of had the perfect the perfect amount where you had, you know, you're going to have a tag team division, you're going to have a men's division, you're going to have a women's division. Only have one, you're only doing a two-and-a-half-hour show with five matches on, on your big shows, on your pay-per-view, you know, special, whatever you want to call them. Um, that way you make sure that all three belts will be defended. All three are um, given some type of uh, uh, prestige showcased uh, uh, as shown as being important. Um, pretty much every, you know, you don't really mess with the title reigns and make do wacky stuff with the title reigns. So the champions all have decent reigns. They all seem legitimate um, to whoever was watching. The, watching. So when you add a second belt, that just dilutes it even more. Um, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, when we, me or anybody else at different points get to talk about like Miz, for example, um, and talk about, well, look how the bar has been lowered for someone like gender. So therefore Miz should, uh, have a chance, um, should give him an opportunity to be in the main event or in the title chase or whatever legitimately. And my thing is like, just because the bar has been lowered and, and everything's been diluted does not mean that like, therefore, like the guys that are just, good as opposed to the great guys um, should get a run. It shouldn't be, you, you get a turn. Like it should be more like the NXT champion more or less, or the, in or the new Japan or I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, G, ah, my God, I, I, W, G, B champion. So championship. Um, you add this other belt now and it kind of mess. So, sorry. I said the I W G P championship. Right. I got, I thought I got it right at the end or no. It's a Hogan joke. Oh, okay. I, I don't get it. So, <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was talking Shout about. Out he, to really strong style. <laughs> he really knocked me off. He really knocked me off. Focus. Fuck. Um, 
Uh, oh yeah. So now um, with the extra title there, um, you you just kind of like throw it off, and now like it, you know that's not a secondary title. Anybody can be the secondary champion. Um, there'll be a spot for you know uh, more more or less like secondary guy. We'll see what they do with it. I I don't know. Like I I, I really I mean it's cool, but I would prefer it if. if as if, like, you gave yourself, you could add three belts and then you had two other matches that mattered where one was, like, you know, more or less like a showcase for a new guy, kind of like um, Aleister Black, Andrade at, um, at the WrestleMania um, last year's WrestleMania TakeOver uh-huh. or a showcase like Aleister Black versus Velveteen Dream at Brooklyn 3. Uh, now there's less room for that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like my my thing with it is um I would rather it stay the way it is, but I think what they're going to do um is they're going to use the North American Championship as like you know how NXT does multiple tours. So they do like the they have the A tour with all their, you know, top guys and then they can send like the NXT North American Champ to like a Largo, to a Tampa, to like their Florida house shows that can, you know, be in the main event there. Mind you, they could have done that with their women's titles. They could have also done that with their tag team titles. But um, this, or they, or they could have done it with like Johnny Gargano at the time, or um, at another time, um, either Neville or Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Like they always, they've always had enough people to do that with. They didn't need to put a belt on to do with that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think, yeah, it's it, it is, um, you know. One more thing to muck up, kind of NXT, I think, to cause more confusion. So, <laughs> like, if we're gonna if we're gonna move, like, if, if they tell me that they're gonna move take over to three hours and they're gonna be six and they're gonna be three hour. I'm sorry, six match, three hour uh, cards. Then okay, fine. But if it's still gonna be five matches in two and a half hours, then you kind of get in the way of you know being able to um, move you know, showcase people that aren't in the title hunt for all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, and, and that, like having such an expanded, like mid card or like, cause you know, there's one title program, right? I think you can, you can yeah. spread out that importance a little bit easier without another championship in there. And then also keep that women's title is like, not, not necessarily as a number two championship, but maybe even a one, a depending on who, who's holding it and throwing this belt in there. Kind of like, you know, it just, Kind of like I said before, causes confusion. And, and another thing that they kind of lucked into, or uh, whatever you want to call it, is we're at a spot right now where it looks like the women division is kind of like reloading to having the depth that they had when they had four, you know, the four horsewomen mm-hmm. and Alexa and Nia. Um, so. Actually, when Nia was kind of after the four, but you get my point. Like they never had, they they really were at a point where they had like four or five women that were all like you know important and could actually have matches on Takeover. Um, since the Horsewomen all or most have moved up, so it looks like we're rounding we're rounding into a part to where like with with um, Kyrie and Ember and um, Shayna. That if like all of a sudden, like if Peyton Royce, you know, gets a little bit better or Nikki Cross or if you give Nikki Cross more opportunity, you get to a point where like they can have two women's matches on a car. So like you're really like making a log jam with this other title. That, that, that's kind of what I'm concerned about is like there's only five matches like if they make a six, if they move it to three hours and put six. I'm cool. But if not, then like I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm sure all the matches still going to be good, but like. You're kind of, you know, um, from a booking standpoint, you're kind of, you know, tying yourself into a corner, push yourself into a corner. So also being added in the 205 Live division are the Cruiserweight Tag Team titles. So this one's a little bit even like weirder because the Cruiserweight Championship barely ever gets on pay-per-view, but... I'll give them this. 205 Live has a renewed focus, James. I don't know if you've been seeing much of the tournament, but it's been, you know, fairly no. good. It's been fairly good. Um, I don't know if there's, like, anything. There, there's probably been a couple four-star matches in there, but nothing lower than, like, a three-and-a-half. 
Um, this man's like dying, cracking up laughing. <laughs> no, bro, you asked me if I would watch the Cruiserweight uh, thing. Like, hell no, bitch. I haven't watched Cruise. I haven't watched 205 Live since Enzo got there. He's gone now. I don't care if he's gone or not. <laughs> I don't care if he's gone. <laughs> Unbelievable! I need, I need some, I need some more space between the letter, you know. Unbelievable! You need, you need. I need more distance. Look, you, I need more distance. You, you need a new champion in place. Something, <laughs> something. I need something. Oh man! I don't know what it is, but like it's definitely going to involve more time away from what was the uh, the Enzo Amore era. I need more time in between. Yeah. So. um It'll be interesting to see how those um, belts come into it, but it also goes against the argument, you know, there's too many belts, and I don't think these guys, like the Cruiserweight Tag Team title, like, that's, like, even lower on the totem pole, especially with both shows being combined into one for uh, those, you know, like the Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views. I think we are looking at the pre-show headliner belts. Yeah, um... Is there any chance that because they, they did this, like, you know, just how you mentioned the um, multiple touring for um, between NXT, A shows and and, um, and and B shows. Do you think there's also because they're trying to do a, um, a 205 live um, tour? Do you think that's, that's basically like to add to the to the value of having, you know, to go into the car to seeing basically two title matches as opposed to just one? I think that's part of it. For sure. Definitely. Mm. I mean, I will say this: given the number of people on the card or people on the two hundred five live roster, and that it's our show, it would be a good use to be able to make a tag division. Yeah, like um, you especially know, get more guys when the tournaments on the card over. or whatever. But right, but the, I mean, but the only the only issue I see the same thing you mentioned is like they're never going to they're never going to be utilized ever on a pay per view. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. Like, you don't have to have, you know, you don't have to have title matches only be on pay per view. Um, if you turn into, a, you know, something like that looks resembles something, uh, something like a uh, television title, unofficially, cool. Because um, you know, given what the what the guys can do in um, two hundred five, you put four bodies out there. You can you can do a lot of good work out there, um, and I, I think that might interest people a lot more than like you know two guys out there or multi man match in like you know it's ten, or right now it's probably like ten thirty ten forty, and then people are just like wanting to go home, and you know doing leg locks and rest holds and shit. Um, <laughs> thankfully those days are over, but um, yeah. So moving on from there, um, Hillbilly Jim was announced for the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, the first thing I thought of, Hillbilly Jim, nice guy, uh, enjoyed him on Legends House, seems to be a well-liked guy from every single story I hear about him, uh, he was a fairly, he was involved in some big things, and even though that man clapped on the ones and threes, that's okay, but the first thing I thought about (laughs) was, who the fuck is inducting him, and are we about to get the wool pulled over our eyes for, uh, cause you know how Hillbilly Jim came into the WWE, right James? No, there's no one that makes. Don't say Hogan. (laughs) Yes, like Hogan literally, like they did the fan in the crowd gimmick, and he pulled uh, this fan who happened to be Hillbilly Jim out of the crowd and essentially trained him to wrestle, and then was tag team partners with him and did a couple programs. And the the baby faces or the the heels would get heat on Hillbilly Jim, so Hogan would come back and defend his friend, stuff like that. So. The only person I could see inducting him in the Hall of Fame is Hogan. So, I don't know if we're about to get the wool pulled back uh, and our head slap. But, uh, congratulations to Hillbilly Jim. But, it's bigger than Hillbilly Jim in these streets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, if that's the case, yeah. But, I mean, whatever. I mean... I mean, I don't really have I don't really have anything to say about Hillbilly Jim. I really don't know. Like, I mean, congratulations to him on getting into WWE Hall of Fame, the, the illustrious uh, halls. Um, yeah, that, that's 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 it. Yeah, man. So um, Monday Night Raw, um, 
was definitely the it wasn't a great show. It was, it was like, personally, I thought, you know, the first segment, uh, after that, you can take it or leave it because just a lot of stuff was a lot of like swings and misses, um, for me, but let's begin with the, um, with the opening segment, James, like, uh, I'll go through it, uh, for those that don't remember. So, Angle thanked everyone and, you know, he wanted to get serious when he came out there. He says that Triple H punched him in the face. And called Triple H out to the ring and said he doesn't care if he's the COO. He wants Triple H to come out and face him like a man. So Triple H's music hit, or excuse me, Stephanie's music hit. And uh, Stephanie came out instead. And then uh, after that, Stephanie tells uh, Kurt to calm down and says Triple H was, isn't even here yet. To booze. Stephanie said, that, and that's the truth. And Stephanie talked about Angle's family and says his alimony payments must be high. At the same time, forgetting that Jason Jordan was also in Kurt Angle's family. Um, you know, they, they kind of like whiffed on that part, but that's okay. Um, she talked about how uh, Kurt was a Olympic gold medalist and a double D- WWE Hall of Famer and so on. And then she asked if those accolades are paying the bills right now. So, yes, they treated him like the big slave. Um <laughs> Um, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yes, uh, and she said, "But being the raw GM does doesn't it? Is that correct?" And she told Angle to think about those things. And she says that Triple H was provoked. She went on and she blamed Angle for almost ruining their big signing. And she blamed Angle for Ronda Rousey putting Triple H through a table. Stephanie told Angle that he needs to know his role and just make the matches and use his head. The music interrupts into his bad reputation. And Ronda Rousey came out and the fans applauded. Rousey came out there. And hug uh, Kurt Angle before Stephanie wanted to shake her hands. Uh, fans were cheering for Rousey pretty pretty big. Uh, Rousey said, you know, what she did, what Stephanie did to Angle last week was enlightening. And she's like, you know, I know who, you know, it's kind of becoming clear to me who y'all people are. Uh, and, you know, she talked started talking about WrestleMania after that. And she said, all right. I basically have creative control. I can pick my opponent. You know, as long you said, as long as it's not a title match. Well, I want you. And then all of a sudden, Triple H was out there on her. So we can just take it from here, James. Um, what did you think about all this stuff? I thought that um, I would have liked them to have used the part where it's explicitly told that um, that Angle told the truth on the first um I ex, uh, encounter with Rousey and then the week after or the day after was told to lie because his job was online. But it, basically everything changed once um, Triple H put his hands on him again because he had warned him. Uh, but other than that, it, other than that, like this was great. Um, like this was a five star segment. Like this is that, like this was, this was in, this is incredible. This was very very fun. It was very enjoyable. I mean, I'm I'm really enjoying what they've done with with Rousey so far. I, I feel like they're over. I feel like they're three for three. Wow, five stars. That's a bit high in my book, but um, I, I thought it was a good segment. For segments? Yeah, I thought it was a good segment. Bruh, it, it was okay. Bruh, a five star segment, segment is bruh, like the rap seg- battle. This is not close. Hold on, God damn it. This is not Hold close. On. Any segment, any segment that has. Stephanie getting whooped on is five stars at this point. Am I like, I don't know how you can say otherwise. All right. Um, Kurt Angle looked washed for one. (laughs) Kurt Angle looked washed. The whole thing is like real, like kind of herky jerky. People are going crazy for it. I just don't think it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's cool. It's fine. It's good. I didn't say it was either. You said it was five stars. I didn't say it was either. I said it was five stars. Anyway. That's all I said. (laughs) Um. So yeah, because uh, John- are we going to are we going to get are we going to get like mm, let's see are we going to get ten seconds better than this this year? Well, with the quality of WWE, who knows? It comes and goes in okay. these street- it comes and goes in these streets. But if you're asking me if it's on like the okay. level of the rap battle or something, or even the Usos New Day promo from last week, no. I would say those, okay, all right, if that's the standard, then sure. Um, for me, this is five stars. Like, everybody everybody got over. Everybody did their job well. Everybody makes you want to see this match. Like, this feels like the main event of WrestleMania right now. 
That's awful. like not not Strom or like I'm sorry, not um not Roman in uh Brock Lesnar, you know but this feels that, like the main event right now. Do you know now. why that feels like the main event of WrestleMania, James? Because they haven't started why? any other angle yet. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it feels like the main event of WrestleMania. Like, they haven't got started with Brock and Roman, really, because Brock hasn't shown up. Undertaker's on hold with Cena while they do their little fuck shit. Nakamura and, and uh, AJ are in limbo. Um, what else besides that's the main event? Asuka, she can't challenge anybody. Mike, said that yeah, I, look, Asuka can't challenge anybody, so they're on hold. Of course this feels like the main event right now. It's the only match like that's really booked. <laughs> That's a top flight match. Okay. That they're doing, so all, that they're moving forward so with. Out all, so, out of all the ones you just named, which ones are actually going to have three good segments in a row like that besides Cena Undertaker? Because I don't see a single other one I'm having a good, I'm having three good segments in a row like that. I think, by, match. I think by the time WrestleMania comes, this will sit comfortably in the three or four spot because I, they may have shot their wad too early. Now, the thing is, Ronda is signed to be on WWE every week until WrestleMania. Do you think the hot streak yep. is going to continue? Um. If you had asked me, I get what you're saying. Paying a lot of average, of course, is gonna, you would assume they're going to catch a dud. However, like the fact that they were able to make it work week one, week two, and week three makes me think that this is like the new Goldberg thing, where they're just going to like knock out the park all the way throughout, pretty much. That could happen. Uh, I but, really do. But but I, th- I think like by the time those other three settle in, and you know this will be right there three a, you know it'll it'll occupy the role it needs to by that point. I hope you're right because these SmackDowns and Raw is dry as hell right now. So, like, <laughs> it, please do. Please be right, Rich. They dry as please a, save me from having to watch five hours of mediocre wrestling. Please. They dry as an old rotisserie chicken right now. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> they, um, yeah, so it broke down into a big fight. Um, Rousey did jump on um, Stephanie. Of course, I was furious at first because I thought they were going to have Stephanie lay her out from behind and it was just going to be just more of the same. I don't even think Ronda Rousey should have fell. She should have just turned around like, bitch, who are you? And flipped her. Like, uh, I, and I know Simon, he hated the segment. So uh, I'm sure he has something to say. I, I'd be interested to see. Yeah, I'd be interested to see uh, what, what he got from it. But um, moving on from there, we saw Oscar and Knight. Simon, Simon, Simon would say that your grandma's red cooler would, would, would be a minus five stars. Like, the, like, <laughs> Simon's the Grinch. Like, straight up. I love Simon, but Simon's the Grinch. Like, what? Simon will see something's awesome. Simon will say something's awesome and, be, and, we'll, and, re- and reply to it by saying it was good. Not just not great, not fantastic, not like he enjoyed it a lot, not like it made his day, just good. Yeah, it's like that sometimes, man. What up, Simon? But, um, yeah, we saw Oscar and Nia Jax. Um, Oscar defeated Nia Jax with the arm bar after, like, you know, a long, long, long time in the submission hold and they had Nia Jax crying after the match and it seems like it tried to go over um, to get sympathy on her I hate this James <laughs> I, I hate this I okay so if you ask me what it did for, for everybody in, in I feel like the person that's actually moving that that won the match didn't make her look great. Like she got her ass whooped again by by uh, Naya. Uh, she's so happy to be able to slap on a move, um, a submission move. Um, Naya, like she did pretty good fighting, but um, but Naya's wrestling is not there yet. Um, so like that whole match he off it's the whole time and I mean maybe it's part of his it, part where like Oscar selling it is not not believable but the whole time like her office is so like it doesn't look effective like she's at, like, I mean I see Oscar selling obviously I see the office but like I don't believe that like nice actually kicking her ass if you get my, get what I'm saying right yeah like none of it looks crisp um I think now. I think Alexa. I just didn't like all the crying. As a, nar- as a I think Alexa, as a narrator, sitting next to her, explaining to her why, explaining to the crowd, or being based like the exposition, exposition dump, explaining like why um, Naya, you know, why Naya should should actually be beloved. I thought that was great. 
Um, but it, it props to, to Alexa because you know we, we, you know, a lot of the stuff Alexa does is is cute or it's useless. But this one was actually effect, this one was actually well executed and it actually explained where they're going. Um, and, and that's something to say as, you know, being a, a, a liar like she is and a heel like she is to be, to be like a clear narrator for the, the storyline. Um, but I still don't want to see this match. <laughs> um, and, and I feel like, you know, if you're talking about between the two women's titles, I feel like, like Oscar, I mean, she's undefeated, but like that's all she has going for her right now. She's undefeated and she's beaten a woman that's kicked her ass um, throughout both of her last two matches. Yeah. Um. So like, I'm I'm dying to see her. I'm dying for this week to be over with, or even Sunday for like Oscar to show up after uh, Charlotte beats uh, um, Ruby. And it just started from there because, like, I, I, I just, I just want this to get her away from the raw women and into her feud with Charlotte. Um, and hopefully, Charlotte can can deliver some good uh, mic promos um, in the next, I think, four weeks left uh, before WrestleMania. Yeah, so I'm gonna jump over to the main event segment. Paul Heyman was out for a promo with the Universal Championship in his hand. No Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman shot an air ball. Yes, even the greats have times of moments of struggle, uh, moments where the the message gets old. Well, yes, the message got old a long time ago. And Paul Heyman, I was watching this promo and I was like, this is horrible. Absolutely horrible uh, what they were doing with Paul Heyman. And it was just, you know, the reason I didn't like it was, you know, they, he said all this shit that made no sense when juxtaposing it to Lesnar and then when putting it to Reigns. It was just a bunch of cussing and a bunch of, you know, just just dumbness. Like, this whole, like, my major problem with this thing is they are making this to where Brock Lesnar needs to be hated. They are bending over backwards for people to love Roman Reigns with open arms on this, right? But Brock Lesnar didn't sign that contract. Vince McMahon signed that contract. He was the one that, that did this. Why should we p- be pissed about Brock Lesnar working the dates of the contract that he has, that someone gave him? I don't know, man. I and and then the whole thing. He 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 needs he basically, and we'll get to Roman Reigns in a moment too because they seemingly have one strategy to try to get Roman Reigns cheered, and it's him cussing. And anyone can cuss. I'll turn it over to you, James. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought that I was watching it, and I thought like the third hour was just woof, um, like. I don't understand, like, what, first off, people don't want to watch the beginning of Raw, like, at 8 o'clock when you do 20 minutes of talking. And then they went and did back-to-back, like, to close out the show. Miz talking forever, and Hammond coming out in the main event to talk forever. And granted, they've had Hammond come out and be a, be a main, to main event as a, uh, to end the show talking before, and it's been great before. Yep. This time, he comes out and cuts a great promo for a feud that doesn't exist. And this is a completely wrong view for him to cut that kind of promo. Um, for you to cut a promo talking about what it means to be the champion, and it means that, like, uh, the belt means more than your family, it means more than your wife, it means more than everything else, and that comes first, and that is, you know, your your bitch, and your bitch loves you, and you love your bitch, and, and that thing, and, like, and what it takes in the, the main, you know, for a title that, like, that's supposed to mean as much, I'm thinking to myself, this would be a great problem if this was a WWE title. This is a fucking Universal title. This is a, this is a title that, that when it was unveiled, got booed to shit and ridiculed to shit. <laughs> this is a belt that the first person that won the belt had to relinquish it the next day. Um, this, is a, this is a belt where the first time there was actually a, a, any type of substantial reign was carried by a guy that they made into a comedy geek with a legend um, and then uh, and, well, got squashed to lose it. 
Yep. Like, there's only been four champions. Only one of them has actually been, like, an actual, like, legit, had a legitimate title reign that you actually say, that's a good title reign. The problem is, is with Brock Lesnar, and Brock Lesnar only defends the shit, like, four, four or five times a year. So, for me, for them, him to cut that promo, is like, are you... I'm a, are you unaware this is a universal title, and are you unaware that like the person that you're talking on behalf of this is Brock fucking Lesnar? Yeah, what? It was so tone deaf. Um, like so. Yeah, like this is. If you ever get a chance, um, you ever get a chance, like go and watch like, the, the, the show open for the 1998 Royal Rumble. Uh huh. And there's like, and there's a dude, and you know they had the voice guy do the voiceover and talks and narrates and tells you about like all the Royal Rumble. Sw- Sorry, I said the 1998 Royal Rumble. Yeah, and he goes on this long thing where he talks about like all the, you know, there, you know, there's um former, there's former Gridiron Grace like Ron Simmons in The Rock. There's um there's UFC guys like like, like Dan Severn and, and Ken Shamrock. They're um. Um, there's there's stone cold assassins like Steve Austin. There's there's people there's mentally uh, uh, mentally volatile people that are crazy like mankind, and they're all willing to, to, to go through blood, sweat, tears, broken bones, uh, torn ligaments, ripped up cartilage, and all this other stuff to get to to be able to face off the just for the chance to actually have a have a shot at the crown. And then they show the end of Shawn Michaels with the belt. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of promo he put in line for, like what you have to go through and what you have to, and what it takes to be a champion and that sort of thing. And then you look at like who the champion is, and you're like, these don't, these two things don't match up at all. Yes. Like, and then and then also, and he makes it even worse because Roman is telling you that he's a shit champion. And also, Roman Reigns didn't appear so, on so, television so, until eleven ten p.m. Like it was like super overrun. Yeah. It was just completely unnecessary, and it went on and just droned on forever. Yeah, and then, um, and I didn't pull that '98 thing out of my ass. Like, I actually, when I did the finish show uh, thing, I had to. I went and watched it, but, um, but for Roman to come out and then like tell him and pull base like the '95 Bret Hart thing with these ones, <laughs> like you know, I respect the belt. I'm like, oh god, this is. This is like this is not. This is they need to find another approach, or they need to like go back to what they tried, what they started tried to do the first week with Roman, and like and go back. They took a step, and that step was in the wrong direction. You need to go back and, and try again so from like, that starting like, point. Like, the, the, like the, they need to basically all... like go like skip or go back to like or was it uh get take two hundred dollars and go back to go basically yeah. like. He he said the the fans just want their champion to show up to work. He says like they they literally reserved this storyline for Roman Reigns. They didn't do this shit during the Samoa Joe feud. They didn't do this shit during the Braun Strowman. They didn't do it during the Royal Rumble feud. They literally have tried to craft this bullshit narrative. Like don't, don't make him the fucking champion. Like <laughs> like I don't I don't know, man. It's. It's so it's so weirdly meta. Yeah, but the thing is, like the per the, the messenger is a person is not like the message is is like what a lot of people feel, obviously. But the messenger is not some is not somebody that anybody wants to hear say this shit. And that's what ultimately going to you know, like, like if it doesn't work, that'll ultimately be the reason. Like no one wants to hear Roman Reigns say this shit. Like not like. Like no one wants to see here like the, the no one wants to hear Golden Boy complain about the luxuries that the other Golden Boy is given, right? Like Brock <laughs> Lesnar is one of one of you know what I'm saying? Like he's clearly one of uh Vince McMahon's guys that he's always had this this huge erection for. Um like no one cares that like, you know, one of his guys is also is gonna be quote unquote truth about that guy. Like it didn't work for it didn't work for John Cena when John Cena was doing it with Lesnar. You know, so yeah. It, so what like, about so what like, about Reigns? Point, like they said, they said enough. Just like at this point, just fight. Just like just get right. a brawl, get a pull apart. They like, have to fight each other. Week. They have to fight and they have to fuck each other up. And I think Roman Reigns needs to beat the holy living shit out of Brock Lesnar next week. It needs to just like yeah, go like, down that way. 
Yeah, we need a no DQ match. Like the like to hell with all this, you know, the classic wrestling match at the end of the show. No. These two need to have like a, a fucking last man standing match if, if need be. Do like make sure this shit is violent. <laughs> Run it. Like make if you want Reigns to earn it, he's gonna have to earn it physically because like nothing he's gonna say is ever gonna go over that well. No matter how many times he calls someone a bitch, no matter how many times they script him to to cuss or shoot on manufactured situations. Like, what do you think about that whole um, aspect of it? Like, as far as, like, the training wheels they're putting on him, like, to do this stuff. Is this a sign of who this guy is? I, I don't know. Um, I feel like he's delivered, um, recently he's delivered some. he's doing the best role work of his career, like, in the short time, in the spot duty they've given him. Um, it's still he's still not putting in his half compared to say a Miz or uh, say an Alexa or anybody else like that that's come out and talk all the time. But like he is doing well, he is pretty much on, on like probably the best run of his career right now. Roman, it's just the stuff they have him say a lot of times. It just it isn't like it doesn't, doesn't match with reality, and it comes off like a false narrator, even though he's a babyface. Um, but. He's doing well with the pro- with the lim- he's doing well with the promos they've given him, which is better than what was going on before. So like, I really, it's an improvement. So I can't really like complain that much about improvement. Um, uh-huh. But, I, uh, but I think at this point, given where we are, there ain't too much more. Like, like I don't think he needs to cut another promo explaining why he hates Brock Lesnar. Like it, that's been explained. Now at this point, he just needs to come to face to face and, and say what he needs to say to him, and they need to fight. And yeah. um, I think that I think that's all you really need at this point. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm advocating a full beatdown for Roman Reigns next week to show to make it seem like where Brock Lesnar don't want to show up. And you know, like I told y'all on the thread, like that you need to have Roman Reigns like on uh, grab a microphone afterwards and saying if you want some more I'll be at the Superdome to give it to you you need to show up run it and then like hell you know have Roman just you know go through a couple guys on the next couple raws or wrestle one match or two matches and then that's it like you may maybe you bring them together the the, the um uh, night or the week before WrestleMania, and do another pull apart, and maybe Lesnar gets the uh, the upper hand there, and then you come back and you you run the uh, title match a week after. So I'd put them together two more times. Okay. But I like, I want I really wonder what like as long as they don't do a tug of war and they don't do it like yeah. And they don't do a contract signing, or maybe they, or maybe you know, they do the brawl and then, like the you know the go home show or the week before the go home show, they do a uh, do a contract signing, or whatever. But like, I feel like they only need to get physical once. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they do two face faces, but I don't see. I don't really see the need for them to have to get, get physical twice. Um, and I really do believe that it needs to be a no DQ match. That needs to be like explained, like. This is a rematch. Like we we circled around each other like three, you know, uh, for three years now. We hate each other's guts. Ain't we no never rules. got to find out who was the best. I had WrestleMania 31. I hate this dude, and I hate this dude, and uh, we need weapons to show show the world how much we hate each other. And we gonna show you. And we gonna show uh, one. Somebody's gonna show somebody else who uh, who's the better man. Somebody got to die. <laughs> yeah, somebody got to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. They um yeah, and moving on, um John Cena, I think he shot an air ball as well, um, on Monday night. I don't know what he was talking about, bro. Yeah, that was a bad one. He tried again. Like basically what he's doing is like every single week because he you know, he's a man, a desperate man that has no WrestleMania match. He's out here basically trying to throw you up the sit. Of um by just saying you know what we're gonna turn it into a three way and no one wanted that shit in the same way that people said that they wanted that the crowd reacted to him versus Undertaker but like he went out there again to actually try to you know make people believe that like any of these matches are possible even though most people already know what the situation yeah. is um it just it just didn't work and I mean you know Cena Cena's cut a bunch of promos like this where they just don't 
don't connect, even though they're well delivered or whatever else, it's just because like no one wanted to hear it at the time and back to the drawing board. Yeah, even like, he, you can't even, you can't make every shot you take. Like I think this is crazy. We had John Cena and Paul Heyman on the same show on the same night, just whiff. Two of the greatest promo guys the industry has yeah. ever seen. They just it just didn't connect. I don't think that's ever I don't think that's ever gonna happen again. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think that's ever gonna happen again. That was Rare. Like now you think back. No, I didn't think about it until you just mentioned it, but yeah. Like you had Heyman and you had uh and you had Cena and you had Miz and you had yeah. like Stephanie out there, all cut promos pretty much, and like it wasn't a great night for promos. That's weird. Yeah. And it comes after last the week before where all the promos were good. So it's like yeah. What the hell yeah. happened here? <laughs> um, yeah, but but moving on from that, uh, John Cena wrestled Goldust. It, that was kind of a fun match for me. Uh, you know, they've never wrestled before. I love Goldust. Goldust called himself a bum. Had me dying laughing. I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Um, <laughs> like, like, this shit was like, this shit was nuts. <laughs> I could have been a contender, but I could have been someone, but but now I'm a bum. Like, <laughs> nigga, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, they did John Cena versus Goldust. Of course, John Cena got Goldust the fuck out of here uh, with the victory. Uh, real basic match. Uh, James, there the other thing that happened on Raw, there was a tag team uh, match. Uh, if the Revival defeated Cesaro and Sheamus... They would get a WrestleMania opportunity, or they'd be the number one contenders. It didn't happen. This is your time, James. Here lies the revival. It's my time? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the most I can do is be craving Friday talking to his dad about the dog biting him on the ass. I told you. I told you. I told you. Um, Yeah, man, like... There was no reason to believe that Vince is going to give a flying fuck about the revival. The Mark the Rollins of how good they were. I'm sure he saw, you know, at one of the takeovers at one point, like he probably saw one of their matches or whatever, and he probably was like, good match. Can't do nothing with those guys. <laughs> um, and, and, I mean, and, you know, ultimately that's, that's really sad and that sucks because those guys are, you know, one of the best tag teams I've ever seen in my life. But you know what it was? Like, once he saw that them do, like, once – they're one of those groups, especially given that era or that time frame when, like, they were airborne left and right on NSC call ups. So it's like, dude, I don't, like, maybe they actually try with them and maybe they make it work because they're wrestling so good they can still get themselves over to an extent. But, like, I don't know if it's even going to try with these dudes. And, you know, they show up, <laughs> uh, they put the new day on the shelf, they get hurt immediately. It's been a full, it's been almost a full year since they've been up because they showed up the night after WrestleMania 30, 33. I think Vince, you know, whatever little Vince regard Vince held them in, like, I'm pretty sure he's already like, I'm done. Like, I'm going to give these guys a shot, and, and they've just been they're getting hurt. Like, you know, with it, uh, if they can find a way, cool, but, like, I'm not going to, like, put any more, you know, brain power into making this work. And it sucks because they're really good, but you know how Vince is when, when just based off aesthetics. Those guys were guys that were always going to be behind a bow in Vince's mind. Yeah, they were all always- Knowing Vince, you yep. know that. Yep. Um and, and it's kind of it's kind of bad to see. Um, all it read, ran through my mind was when uh, a couple of weeks ago when DX got the revival the fuck out of here, and you know some people claim that that was good for them, and we can clearly see that it wasn't. <laughs> um, nope. so yeah. Also, um, announced on Monday was the Intercontinental Title match. Yes, The Miz, uh, in a WrestleMania match prominently, uh, with Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, uh, triple threat. The only person that I don't think this good match is good for is Seth Rollins. Because, as you mentioned on the show, I believe Sunday is like, you compare it to the past couple WrestleManias and it feels like a step down. Uh, Balor and Miz, I think that's right where they need to be. And, you know, Balor, I think he earned a lot back in the, you know, from the Royal Rumble on. But th- this thing kind of breaks down to spots and that we'll get to with our Strowman uh, discussion in a moment. But. What what did you make uh, about this match being announced? We kind of knew it was coming. Um, like, if my thing is this, like you say, that the only person that this is um 
This is step up for us, Seth. Or um, step down. Step I down think for Seth. Us, Seth. It, oh, you think it's step down for Seth? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, given like what Seth has done in previous years of WrestleMania. Um, but if you ask me, like, it, what I think is going to happen and what and what's going to and what's going to happen to get there, like, if. Finn Balor shows up. Given this, Finn Balor, like you know, one of the reasons why he got hired is the fact that he had a uh, he has WrestleMania entrance, and he shows up in that paint. He fucking loses. Like I don't know where he goes from here. Um, so like Hell. I think Seth is going to win. I think Seth will make a, a fantastic Intercontinental Champion. Um, but <sighs> I feel like Miz, like Miz without the belt, is really is not. This, not on the same level what I have is something to shove in people's face for validation and like Finn like you know Drake coming out with the war pain losing like alright where are you going from here like you did it like you know like the reason why you hired him is to be like to have some type of streak like that to show that he comes out in war paint but that it, it, the K favorite to where like that's kind of like some you know supernatural type of thing that gives him special powers, but he's going to lose, and I don't know. Like, maybe maybe they decide to put it on Finn after all, and that'd be cool, but I'd be cool with Seth not necessarily being an in, intercontinental kind of champion because I feel like he's so over right now that it's kind of like, that's kind of beneath him, but I don't know what happens. Like, where do you think Miz goes after this? Like, he gives up, he drops the belt to one of these two guys. What do you think he does after WrestleMania? I think he eventually gets a title shot uh, uh, with Roman Reigns being like as a guy that, you know, can beat uh, Roman Reigns can go over. I don't know if that necessarily happens right off the bat because I wouldn't do that immediately after WrestleMania. Uh, But I could see that being like Miz's second feud, or excuse me, Roman's second feud with the belt. So basically like right before getting to SummerSlam? You got it. Okay. I mean, yeah, I agree with you because like, What's the saying? Like, uh, it's kind of a saying that if you make a new champion, you don't you want to give them like a strong first opponent afterwards. Yeah. Um, to get their their title reign off to a good start. <clears throat> Case in point, like AJ and Roman in 2016. Um. So yeah, I, I don't think Miz is the proper opponent for that. Um. Uh, but yeah, a next a next few like as like this step in for like a month or two. Yeah, I can see that. Um. I mean, I mean, there's always, you know, he could always go and fight back for his belt for another month or two. Yeah. Um, but moving on, um, Braun Strowman absolutely destroyed Elias on Monday. Uh, Elias was really, I think, in rare form, uh, you know, as far as like the performance aspect with the music. I think this was the best I heard him sound on guitar. And then he played all the other instruments, too. I was like, wow, this guy's pretty talented. But, um, you know, then the match started. And um, <laughs> Braun Strowman beat the holy living shit out of him, and it hit me. Not that I didn't realize this before. It was like, yo, this guy is the ultimate of the ultimate cartoon characters. And it it, it kind of became sad, essentially, like watching it, because it was like, yo, this dude is about to get fucked at WrestleMania time again. Um, <laughs> you know, last year he was notoriously like left off the card and put in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. This year he's kind of stuck in no man's land, and it's like they tell you to get over, they tell you to reach for the stars, and then you end up being a cartoon character on the outside looking in six weeks before WrestleMania. Um, <laughs> it is it it is really disheartening, like to look at with Strowman, like. And I'll get into it when we start talking about Nakamura and Rusev. It's like, do organic things matter at all? Nope. Um, they have plans and, like, people, you know, people um, uh, succeed or disappoint compared to where they, they were planning, where they planned to have you eventually. And they might rejigger some things because you're more over than you are or they might not. Um but they have plans and they're going to stick with it for the most part. Like, unless there's, you know, unless there's some, some type of thing like an act of God or something <laughs> where like, you know, you know that there might be a fucking riot. Like they don't, they don't change plans. Um, and, and, and that really sucks. Um, and like the, but 
Auto, my other question. Yeah. If if Undertaker basically said like hip injury can't do it, whatever else. Like if when it was if if Shawn was a late sub for the Undertaker to be in there with John Cena, like would would everybody be happy or or would we or 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 would that be enough for, for Strowman? I feel like that'd be enough. I feel like that would be the perfect match, but I feel like f- people would be furious about it. I don't know why. I think it would be more the John Cena thing, uh, but I would definitely have uh, Strowman beat Cena clean one, two, three. Like, no question in, in that match. And and keep it as well, far. Well, yeah, you got to actually give him a W. On... Yeah, like, yeah, you actually finally have to give Strowman a W on a big show. Like, that's the thing right now with him is, like, they, they haven't really talked about it, but, like, if I was if I was gonna be Miz and be a smart ass and try to get myself over at the expense of my baby faces and undercut my baby faces, I would say to Strowman, on the big shows you are a choking dog. You can't you can't win the big one. I would say stuff like that. Like you can you can power slam people all the time and you can throw you can shit over and get Strowman all that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to it on a big show, you're a fucking loser. Like why don't you flip a if double? If I was gonna be Miz and like <laughs> and be a jackass. And not understand how wrestling works, and I would do that. Yeah. Um, tell him. Tell, um, tell him. Why don't you flip a W over? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's funny because actually he says flip a W over. The Warriors just start to tip off against the Spurs, the Dubs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I think I think he whatever he does at WrestleMania just got for the sake of for the sake of God, please let it be a <laughs> please let it be a friggin' win. Whatever they do. Yeah, he's he's got to go over. But moving on um, to our preview for uh, WWE SmackDown, uh, their pay per view, uh, Fast Lane. I don't want to talk about that television show we watched. Um, I might mention it in passing going forward here, but there was just so much shit that was just like infuriating, especially them making <laughs> that fatal five way, and then it's like, oh, y'all want to go ahead and give us the match that y'all didn't want to give us as the uh, main event, and it was like when I watched it, I was like, "Ooh, this feels kind of flat." Maybe they did need to add John Cena to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, is it, are we still on six matches? Did they cover come with a seven match for the card, or we are or no? still at six? I'm looking at the wiki right now. So, I don't want to sound like dick like this, but this is a two match card, right? No, no. Um, I, I think uh, this is actually, I think, going to be a really good show. I see on like just looking at it, I why? Th- like, I think the main event is going to be great because they do great six man matches. Um, I think the Usos and New okay. Day, that's also going to be great because it's the Usos and the New Day. Yeah. Uh, and I think Nakamura and Russo is mm-hmm. going to be really good, too. Rude. You don't think that he's, uh, he's going to beat him? Like, I think what's going to happen in that match is Russo is going to overwhelm him for, like, I don't know, nine minutes with three minutes of Nakamura office and Nakamura wins in 12 minutes, something like that. You could be right. I, I think they're going to come down, like, because both of these guys are going to embrace the audience, I feel like. The audience will embrace them. And I wrote a column about this this week. Uh, this is a weird... We'll start there. Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Um, they are opening, you know... Or, excuse me, they're going into a few... Both of these guys are massively over. Um, in Rusev's case, his came through um, years and years of consistent good work being taking what was given to him making the most of it and then also letting his personality shine through in places like total divas and also like you know away from the storylines that uh wwe constructs for him and then also aiden english kind of got the song over for rusev day and it's kind of turned into like a feel good it's literally an everyday holiday um and now WWE is trying to redistribute that energy by feeding him to Nakamura. But the thing is, Shinsuke Nakamura doesn't need this. This he does not need the wind aid. Um, like, like he does. Like this is the this is the stimulus package. I feel like for Nakamura uh, in a way that 
Roman Reigns is being let uh, use the word bitch. Like, yeah, we'll have you go over uh, Rusev and just beat him because fans are cheering for him, and now they'll cheer for you. It's like, no, jackass. They already cheer for this guy. I, I, I can see that. I, I, I think they're thinking more or less is we got to get Shinsuke something to do because we've done absolutely we've done next to nothing with him since for Rumble. They failed. So we need to get him on a big show, on a you know pay per view, big show, whatever you going to call it, and get him a W on it, and may as well beat somebody that's actually over. I, that's I think that's the first they ever thought of. That. I don't think they really thought. I mean, sometimes you can kind of see them actually say like you know. Like when they had uh, Stone Cold Big Show come out there and just try to steal the yes chant, call out the yes chant. Yeah. Like, you, you do see stuff like that. But, like, this time I think is like more or less like we got to get these two freaking guys on. We got to get this one guy freaking guy on the car doing something. We might as well use this guy that's not doing nothing right now. That's actually over. Man. I really think that's what it is. They, they should have had Cena fight him. And in a perfect world, in a perfect world, they will go out there and have a great match and Nakamura will win. And, and by beating a guy so much bigger than him, it was showing that he's he's a he absolutely is, is deserving of for the first time actually besides winning a rumble like he's been up deserving of being in a title um, picture, and then like you give and if they had a great match then you would give uh, Rusev a great match to, to first solidify that like this guy is somebody you should actually care about, mm-hmm. but. I, in my opinion, like all they can do, you know, beat him in twelve minutes in a in a uneven match, which is what I think is going to happen because look how they always treat Nakamura on pay per view. Yeah, like th- that eighty twenty agenda is like just like I don't understand it. I don't know why they're doing this, and it's making people think this dude isn't like one of the best wrestlers uh, that's ever come along in this business. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah, like. You know, it's kind of disingenuous uh, on WWE's part. Um, I feel like, um, you know, when they claim what the fans role in the WWE universe is, like I wrote in my comments, like if they're going to push, you know, who they want. Why does it matter who the crowd is cheering ever? You know, yep. Um, and, you know, wrestling's about leveraging expectations and playing, you know, things against each other. But. When you fuck up that many organic things, like, you know, over the decade, like, you fucked up the CM Punk summer, you you damn near, look, you damn near drove the car off the mountain for Daniel Bryan, um, <laughs> you damn near, or, or you, the whole entire Roman Reigns thing has been the antithesis of organic, um, you treat Braun Strowman just like a guy to beat and mow over over and over again. And now with Rusev, it's kind of like, you know, it's not in the same, like, you know, main event level, but it's just like, fuck, like, the dude's popular, he's over, and you want to have him come out here and lose the fucking Bobby Roode. You want to hide him on WWE.com. You want to book him against Nakamura to fucking lose like a bum. And what they're doing is clear with Rusev. This is fucking sabotage. Yeah, I mean, they they definitely staffed him. Like, there was no reason. I mean, this before they even got to where we are now. But like, in the December review, uh, that was uh, Night of Champions, right? Yeah, or Clash of the Champions, right? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, they did Clash of Champions, and they were in that. Um, they were in that that tag. Was it a three way, four way? It was a four way, I believe. Yeah, in the four eight. At that point in time, there was there was no reason why Rusev, given that like the the Usos and the New Day are are two are two solidified stars. It was a matter of shape it or not that people will actually like want to see them wrestle and come out and do do their spiel. Like you could have made a third team that night, or or capitalized off the fact that like Rusev Day is the hottest thing in the streets at that point in time and made them um, the tag champions. No matter how how long or short that run would have been. But you could have at least paid that off, and they didn't even bother. Um, so, you know, it, it's it, it gets really frustrating after it gets really really frustrating time after time when like you see that like they ain't doing know what to do. Like he's not he's not really you know they don't have any plans for him really. He just shows up and is you know funny or or, or flashes um, charisma, and that's pretty much it. They don't actually have any plans for him like. 
I mean, they just came up with this, this match just literally on the go-home show. They pulled a rabbit out of the hat. They were like, okay, yeah. we got to fill out this card. What are we going to do? Uh, and they just, uh, they just imagine, like, them basically, like, looking around, like, uh, look at available people. You're like, uh, Mike Moore not doing shit. Um, they look on, like, they basically like, look down the, the roster. And like, oh, yeah, Roosie ain't doing shit. Throw them out there together. Run it. <laughs> um so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i think nakamura goes over obviously um sh- the usos in the new day uh the video package that they put out was raw as fuck they cut too much of the usos yeah. promo for me i think they should have put the whole sideline thing in there uh but it didn't take away from the message uh it showed that these are the two teams to be uh, reckoned with for this era, and I couldn't be more excited. I think this match should close the show. I know it won't happen, but these guys, I feel like, have earned that with their performance last year. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't really think there's anything really to add. Like, I thought, it was, I thought, you know, the video package actually um, enhanced the actual great promo. Um, a TV set between us two, and I would love to know what they're going to do at WrestleMania. Um, I kind of feel like this is almost um, in a similar way to Rusev and John Cena in 2015, where they did the match like the, the pay per view right before WrestleMania to basically like do it again. But I don't know if like they can hold off like the Bludgeon Brothers or if like or whatever the situation is. Like may, maybe the whole thing is like. Well, it's a little different now that we know what's going to happen with um, with with Sami Zayn and, and and Kevin Owens. But <laughs> the Usos in the New Day, in whatever fashion, whatever else, need to have a match with either just those two teams or another t- team or, or other teams, whatever else, on the main on the main card. Like I don't really know what to say other than that. Like they definitely deserve it. Um, they definitely put on put in the put in the quality television. They're definitely over enough. Um, like there's no reason not to do it, and also given the fact that like WrestleMania is gonna be like eight hours, May as well, like that should, that should definitely be on the main card. <laughs> yeah, man. Shouts out to Jimmy J and the New Day, um, Charlotte and Ruby Riot, bro. When I was watching that promo, Ruby Riot sounded like the most jealous, underwhelming, lame hater I've ever heard in my life. Um, it was like. Yeah, and I felt like Charlotte handled it, like, everything she said back to her was, like, you know, pretty on point. It's like, hey, you know, if I fail, it's not just me that fails. I fail, like, people look like Ric Flair fails. Like, I have a lot, I have pressure on me, and I've fucking done it. Like, <laughs> and, who, and who the fuck are you, by the way? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like, I saw that and I thought, like, this is a heel cutting a promo on another heel. You can say that. Like, he was like, Charlotte, too. like, sh- everything Charlotte said is so, like, unrelatable. They'd be like, you don't understand what it's like to have to, like, live with, to have to deal with, like, having a legacy on stuff. Like, I don't give a fuck, you twerp. Like, you, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, great. Like, your daddy was great. Like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, what makes, what makes you. Relatable to the fans and reach out to make us love you. Other than the fact, that, like you're great, we know you're great, but like, and, and to me, it's just like more of the same thing with, with Charlotte, where it's like, you know, when she came when she came over to SmackDown, they never actually made turn did anything to actually turn to her face, and she comes out here and she cuts it with the same like cadence and the same tonality, and when she was cutting those heel promos, like, talking down on Sasha or, or calling everybody else genetically inferior to her. It's like this, like it's the same exact package, except like we cheer her now instead of boo her. Look, like, and you, she doesn't cheat anymore. Look, like, that's really the only difference. You know the thing that I like that she said. She was like, you know, um, you know, reality's right here, and and I'm better than everything you've heard about me or whatever. Like, I thought that was like a really good line, but yeah. And so she's like, just better, like every, I'm better, better than, than the, the myth. myth. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, liked, I did like that line. I did. Um, I think they should have a fine match. I just Ruben. wish. Go ahead. I, when they do Oscar versus Charlotte, is there any chance that Charlotte's going to be the baby face? I feel like they're going to turn. I feel like they're going to turn Charlotte Hill again. I mean, they could. Like, I mean, she's already a heel. She doesn't have space. Yeah, she, she's gonna. She's basically going going to get challenged and be like, 
you know, I don't know if this is a situation where they're going to play it like up their history. Like they've been the two most dominant women in their, um, you know, eras in NXT. And then on the main roster, of course, Asuka's Royal Rumble winners has never lost. Charlotte's won all the belts, such and such. If they go that way, I don't think she needs a turn, but she's going to have to do something to carry the mic work for this promo. So I think a heel turn could be on deck. I, and that's one of the reasons why I say they should, they, they might have to go heel with her because, like, if she's going to be cutting these promos, if she's going to be cutting, like, two promos over the next four weeks to get, her, to get this whole thing over, like, and they're going to be of any type of length, like, she is going to come off like such a jerk just because of her cadence and how she talks. So... Like maybe maybe you may as well just lean into that already, um, you know, before you even, like as you get into uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, you could do that. <clears throat> um, I think it's gonna be a, a decent match for Ruby Riot. There's nothing wrong with her as a wrestler. They've built it surprisingly w- yeah. well. They did it without beating the champion James, and you know what? What a fucking shocker that is possible in WWE. Unbelievable. Who fucking knew? Uh- yeah, 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 you're right. They can do it. However, like, does any, I mean, even if you didn't know, like, what they're going to do with Oscar and Charlotte, when you, when you even think for a single solitary second that, <laughs> that, uh, that Ruby Riot will have a chance of beating Charlotte, only because, I wouldn't. It, only because it's SmackDown and they, they will do shit that makes no sense. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, fair enough, I guess. Um, Moving on that, Bobby Roode versus Randy Orton. The whole feud has been about Jinder Mahal. I don't fucking understand it. Um, I guess they feel like they needed a heel to push this face versus face thing because they didn't want to turn either one of these guys, even though both of them would be better as heels. We got to insert Jinder Mahal's fuck ass in there. I wouldn't be shocked if he's inserted in the match to make it a triple threat. Um, The whole feud's been about him anyway. (laughs) WrestleMania, he'll be injected for a three-way. Yeah, that shit will be on a pre-show. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, send that shit to the to the other side, eject button. Like, um, I I feel like this is gonna be a slow, old school, grinded out rest hold match. This dude. <laughs> Like, bro, I don't know, man. Like, yeah. I don't want to talk about this match. Like, fuck this match. Yeah. Fuck this feud. Yep. They're fighting over. They're fighting over fucking lists. This is stupid. Yes. Like, move on, man. Yes. Move fuck on. This. Next, uh, Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Natalia and Carmella. Nah, I'm not doing it. Um, and then the main event: uh, AJ Styles versus John Cena versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. And then I don't know what the fuck kind of match uh, how we got here. Uh, man, it's like they saw the Elimination Chamber and were like, "We need to have a six person match too on our brand with no like type of um, you know gimmick or anything." AJ Styles has been beat on TV more times uh, this <laughs> this month or these past couple months than I feel like he was last year. Like <laughs> for some reason, um, yeah. he he lost matches to Sami Zayn. He lost match to Kevin Owens. He lost a match to uh, John Cena last week, and it was like, yeah, what the fuck. He's in the match with Ziggler this week. They cut it off. They do the six, the five man. He loses again, even though it's a multi man match. He's still fucking lost, and <laughs> you're out here holding this belt now. And it's like, why have they not protected this man at all as champion? I don't understand it. John Cena's in there um, to further his agenda for whatever the fuck they have to do. But um, I think the match would be great. Um, these guys are going to have to outkick the coverage um, <laughs> for you know, and they will they will ach- overachieve uh, beyond what the storyline has given them. Baron Corbin isn't fucking winning, Dave Fenichel. Um <laughs> Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I don't know what they're going to do except the Andre the Giant Battle Royal at this rate, and that's fucking sad because all they've been is excellent together the whole time. All Sami Zayn has done is get fucked in his WWE career over and over again. Kevin Owens is going to wear his KO Mania three shirt and end up in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal 
months after uh, fighting Shane McMahon in a Hell in a Cell match, becoming the biggest star on SmackDown, previously holding the United States title, previously holding the Universal title, and if he ends up on the pre-show, I'm going to fucking snap. Um, (laughs) Dolph Ziggler, who the fuck cares? Who could possibly care? Um... Yeah, bro. Bunch of duds, lame ducks, and suckers in this match. Is it? Is it my turn? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, I think I think there's a moral to the story to this. Um, I think the moral of the story is never never let anybody, even your even your family and friends, hold you back or pull you down. Uh, and. Like, I don't know if, you know, Kev, this is Kevin, you know, Kevin, Kevin Owens was pulled up one of those, this is my heel to die on. Uh, give me, give me Sammy, damn it. All right, we're going to make this shit work. And they've done some good, they've done a lot of good work on TV, but um, Vince don't give a fine fuck about Sammy Zayn. And he has this since day one. And, like, they give him some wins occasionally, and they also beat the fuck out of him, too, on, on, on SmackDown, the main events. And, like we're at it now, where like lo and behold, like Sam or Kevin Owens, who, if you want to say like last three years, like a general or since WrestleMania, or since let's say this, since 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 WrestleMania thirty one, you want to say like go here forward as a generation, Kevin Owens absolutely um, a Mount Rushmore figure in this generation. Yep, um, and he's about to be in the pre show. Why? Because he's out here stuck with his fucking friend. And it's not his friend's fault because his friend's damn good. Damn good. Vince don't give a shit. And this sucks. And this is where we're at now. Where Kevin Owens is going to be doing absolutely nothing at WrestleMania. Going to be wearing a KO, a KO Mania shirt. We need a shit needs to say KO pre-show. Shit's unbelievable, bro. Like, not even going to be on WrestleMania at this rate. Anything could change. Hopefully it does. Hopefully they end up fighting the Usos. That's the match I'd book. Um, you know, sorry, New Day. Um... Sorry, Bludgeon Brothers, like, who haven't wrestled a meaningful match on the roster yet. Um, all squash matches. Um, but Owens and Zayn have been too excellent for too long. And Zayn has kind of just been clawing at, at relevance for, for years, essentially. And he's a guy that, that I feel like if you just lay out what he's done on paper, it doesn't add up to what he's been given. Like, and, you know, you kind of get what you get in these situations, but he really ain't got shit. So, <laughs> like, I can't, like, I can't think anybody that, and, and I can't think anybody that's been, like, this consistent, like, since we've been back watching wrestling. Um, so that's 2011, like, the summer of 2011. Yeah. I think anybody that is, like, given, once given opportunity has, like, on a, have a batting average as high as Sami Zayn, and they've done absolutely jack shit with. It's 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 incredible. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it. I guess it ain't for us to understand. It's really frustrating. Um, like for somebody to be that good of a damn baby face to actually get over your freaking monster that was actually like not getting any kind of reaction um, from being a bunch of geeks and jobbers for forever, and then like he gets that dude over, and now he's like the biggest star of the company, and um. Like now, it's like who who the fuck knows? And like, it, it's so weird, man. It's just, it's just really weird. I don't I don't get it. I just don't. I don't. But like, the sad thing is, like, I don't get it. But like, I knew this. Was, I I you know me getting arguments with like Caleb on um on um in like messages or whatever. Like, I I don't understand it either. It's like he doesn't. But like, I knew this is gonna happen. I just knew it. It's like we don't want to make these arguments. It's like this is what's happening. It's like this fucking sucks. Yeah, what? I, mean, I think it's, I think it's the reason why me and Rand, my me, you, Rez, and Caleb like have our arguments. And most of it is like, like we don't, we feel like I, I, to, I, I guarantee to them, like I don't know, if they talk to each other about it or whatever. But I guarantee both of them think of us like, like they were like fucking party poopers. <laughs> And like the thing is, like, like we're just like we're just here to just like just to just to bag on shit or whatever. So like for the most part, like. But like our opinions are based on what we would do. Our base is our opinions based on like the history of what of what this guy when he's been at at the helm for thirty some odd years and in the last few years, like what his track record is with doing stuff with people 
and like well, people that look in certain situations, precedents or whatever, and like we're we're making educated guesses based off of precedent, and more times than not, we end up being right. And like I don't know if like. It ain't fun. Like, we're just being right, but it ain't fun to be right. Like, and ultimately, like, us being right is, like, typically them doing stuff that is, like, less entertaining. Yeah. Um, it's basically... It's a drag. Yeah, it's basically us saying, that, well, of course they're going to WWE it up. You know? <laughs> like, and, yeah. and y'all know exactly what that means. So, <laughs> it's like, th- we know what the cool thing would be. We know what would get over really huge and they don't go with it. It's, you know, why most things organic get ruined or not capitalized on or these guys that, you know, if you're looking for them to wrestle really good and talk really good on the mic and deliver in situations uh, where they need to draw that right emotion out of the crowd, it always goes well. But when WrestleMania time comes or the big moments come, they always get looked left on the outside looking in for whatever type of wild plan um, is out there at the time. Like WrestleMania 29, like Jack Swagger gets inserted into the fucking world title match for the Elimination Chamber when you have Daniel Bryan, Chris Jericho, um, Randy Orton, those three Randy guys. Orton. Yeah, those three guys right there could have, you know, one of those guys could have fought uh, Del Rio and it would have been a whole hell of a lot better and you would have had a fourth main event for that card. But no, we had to do some bullshit. <laughs> um, I don't, you know... Yeah. Or, we, or, we, or we squashed Daniel Bryan in the opener. Yeah, WrestleMania 28. WrestleMania 28, yeah. Um, yeah, man, like... It sucks being right. Or you break the streak. Yeah, you break the streak. Um, yeah, man, it's... It's rough, man. Like poor. Oh, we beat Sting. We beat Sting. I'm not really tripping on that. Like it's Sting. Like, <laughs> like, like, like he's from WCW. Like, <laughs> um. But that, but that, but that, again, now that knows the thing. I think we talked about it like back then when we were doing the show. Like, bro, they might, they're probably gonna, they're gonna be Sting, aren't they? And he's gonna be fucking Sting. Like, I'm gonna be mad, aren't I? Forever. Sure enough. Forever. Yeah. Why? Because they can't help themselves. Yeah. Um, it's really sad to see what's um, happening to Sami Zayn. Hopefully one day the company recognizes um, his value and, you know, his uh, philanthropic, effort, F- F- philanthropic efforts and also realizes that this guy could either, he can be a heel like he is right now and be really fucking good or he can be a really good baby face. But they don't want that, so it's not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, man, I don't, I don't know if we really got too much more to say. We can probably leave it off uh, there. Um, that's your fast lane preview. Um, AJ Styles is going over. I hope he pins John Cena, get that win back. But um, yeah, man, um, make sure you guys check out the rest of the lineup on the Social Suplex Podcast Network, Ricky and Clive show, and keeping it strong style. SMC Podcast, I got an APB out for, the, for y'all boys. I don't know where y'all at, but uh, time's ticking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, nothing but love to y'all boys. Um, We're going to be meeting up in about a month uh, going to New Orleans, so that is going to be awesome. Uh, Super Card of Honor, James. Did you see Tomohiro Ishii? We're going to see him in person. Among a couple times, we're going to be seeing him in person. Uh, are you excited about seeing Ishii? Oh, definitely. Like, the best body worker in the whole, whole world. Like, I'm definitely excited to see him. Um, I want, I'm going to check around and see what, like, what his shirt, like, what kind, what his t-shirts look like or whatever, because I haven't seen any of his shirts. Like, I've seen, like, a kind of shirts before. I've seen, um, um, Tanahashi shirts before, but like, I've never seen Ishii shirts. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they're better than just, like, a, him with a, a fuck bulldog on the front, but, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, um, Make sure you guys uh, keep uh, checking out uh, the network, as mentioned. Uh, check out the social, or excuse me, the Wrestling Squared Circle Facebook group. Also, we need your ratings. We need your reviews. Uh, do me a favor, if you're listening to this uh, so far, hit us with a like. Uh, hit us with a five-star rating on your uh, you know, service of choice. Tweet it to us at One Nation Radio or at Rich Ladder or at James Wade 87 and we would love to retweet that and show you that love back. Um, 
But that's going to wrap up this episode of One Nation Radio. Check me out on the YouTube page. Uh, doing some commentary videos. I actually did a commentary video with Catherine. We did a Finn Balor versus Cesaro match. And uh, it's up on YouTube right now, so y'all can check it out. Wait, what? So Catherine joined me on commentary for a Finn Balor versus Cesaro match on 2K. So it's, really? it's about five minutes long, so it's actually uploaded now. So right after we finish this, James, you can check it out. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're on there talking, and we're going to do a bunch more of these. I believe Jeremy's going to join me for a couple of them. We're, we're going to be doing – we kind of did a fun one, but I want to do, like, you know, a serious, like, one we're calling it. Um, it's going to be tough because the, the matches uh, on the computer kind of end uh, short shortly, so I'll try to jigger up the difficulty to make the matches last a little longer. But, um, yeah, doing that, I'm have a bunch of fun with that. But um, thank you guys for listening. This is One Nation Radio. We will holler at y'all next time. Peace. Later. Thank you for listening to One Nation Radio. We'll see you next time.